right, I am so glad to be with you, you guys, and uh, get a chance for us to just fellowship in the Son, in, in His life, in His nature, in His way, and in being His body and being the vehicle of His life to other people. Uh, what a blessing. What a blessing we have. Um, the title of what I want to share today is uh, called Lessons from the Cave. I want to be talking about David, King David, but David as king in relationship to what God was bringing him into in relationship to being in the image of the Son and having the Son, as it were, manifested through him. And that's the way we will apply these scriptures in a New Testament way. And um, so I'm going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 24 and read verses 2 through 7, first of all. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day which the Lord said unto thee, unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it sh shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, seeing um, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul, and Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. All right, so in, in verse uh, 2, we see that uh, Saul, he had 3,000 men, and he was chasing David, and he sought to destroy him. And um, so lesson number one is, it's about the lamb. <laughs> Um, David had already been anointed king by Samuel, uh, by the hand of Samuel. God had anointed him as king because of Saul's failure to become royal, if you will, uh, using that word kingly, become after the kind of person and ruler that God would desire to have. Um, and a lot of times we think that the whole issue is well, just make, just give me a position or a title or give me some responsibility and I'll do good. But God has one thing in his heart, and that's always to form the lamb. And remember, and always remember, God exalted the lamb to the throne, to the highest throne in the highest position. And this is the son that we seek. This is the one that we desire to to not just uh, be a, an example to us, but literally to let his life flow through us. And um, so, so that's where our hearts have to be from the very beginning. All along the way, we cannot stray from Christ in us being the hope of glory. Um, so... Um, so Dave, what, David was, exa was um, anointed king, but all of the things that you would expect to happen never did happen. Um, instead of becoming great, <laughs> things started being reduced down, and they reduced down to a cave and a few hundred men. Now that's a pretty small reducing down from having Almighty God saying that, you know, you are now anointed as king, and then everything start going the other direction. But there's a reason for that, and the reason is God's forming his son in us, and the king he wants is the lamb on the throne of our hearts. And so, um, so we see in this situation, it's about expressing the lamb. It's about him, and it's not about crying over our losses. David could have said, this is 
horrible. I'm losing everything and Saul is, is gaining and everybody still looks at him as king and, and doing all that stuff. And um, I wrote a statement, that kind of state of mind will cause you to act on the side of wounded flesh. And how many times do we act on the side of wounded flesh, our own wounded flesh? Um, because uh, we don't recognize that this is God's dealing with eternal purpose instead of God trying to just make us happy in this life. To get that royal nature, to get us to be kings. And, you know, because the scriptures say that, we, shall you not judge the nations? Um, before we'll ever be fit for that, Christ must be formed in us. So uh, now verses four through six, this is lesson number two, which is learn to be royal. Verse six says, And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. David treated Saul like he was the king, when in fact God himself had anointed David as king. And, and he treated himself as if he were lower. See, this is, this is the formation of the lamb. This lamb will go on the throne. And it will in David, and it did in Jesus. And so he's going down. He's become, becoming lower. He's not fighting over things. He's getting the nature of Christ formed in him. And in that process, um, he's learning what royal heritage is. Um, that it's not somebody putting anointing oil on you or calling you or giving you a position or giving you a title and giving you all these things. Um, it's, by, it's by living by a certain kind of nature. Lamb on the throne, you see. Because we go, well, once we get him off the cross, we're going to be okay when God puts us on the throne. <laughs> but it's still lamb on the throne. Um, okay, so lesson number three is... Every opportunity God gives is not about your victory. All right, so reading verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. So, we see we, we're not kings and we're not noble in that sense that we see every opportunity as something that, that um, gives us the victory and gives us the honor and gives us glory and all these things. But David um, literally gave way to Saul, who is what, way worse than him, way worse kind of a person than, than him who wasn't following the Lord, didn't have the Lord. But if God's goal was simply to exalt David, then he'd have, kicked, he'd have taken care of Saul like that. But his goal was David, not Saul, and to get the right kind of person to put on the throne. So, and a lot of times we think we're like, we're like David. And so we, we think in our minds, well, you know, David, you know, I'm like David and, you know, I was anointed king and yet Saul's being king and he's getting all the glory and he's getting all the position and, and uh, I should, I should have that. That's not David. We think we're like David when we're like that. That's like Saul. We're being like Saul. That's the wrong king. And even if you get that position, you'll be kicked off of it by God eventually. All right, so uh, this last part of verse 4 said, uh, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee, that this was the word of the Lord. Um, uh, God didn't specify destroy Saul. He didn't specify that. That's not what God had in mind, see, that you, would, you can do, this is the day that God has given you and allowed you to become something. Um, that's not it. And David did do what seemed good to him. Let Saul live. Even if it meant many, many, many more years of being under pressure and being chased and whatever, all of that formed Christ in him, formed that heart that he had after God. And, and kept him 
focused in the right way. But there are other people who would kill Saul, and they'll obey the same scriptures. Oh, well, God said that I may do whatever seems good to me, to him. And the Lord would say, you, what, what you should have been with is my heart and my nature, instead of what you want to, you, you want to have the victory by defeating somebody. And then, um, you know, David did have a special heart. It was being formed and formulated more and more and more. Uh, but what was it being formed to do? To do what pleased God, to do what seemed good to God. And what seems good to God is, is Christ being formed in us, the Lamb being on the throne of our hearts. And then lesson four is don't let the advice of others override God, Jesus' nature in us, the Lamb's nature. Don't let the advice of others. So that's still um, verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemies into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. They're saying kill him. They're saying this is it. This is God. This is the victory. See, they totally misread it all. They cannot see correctly because their hearts are wrong. And this is why we, we have to go down before we can ever come up. So some will always advise you to, uh, to the way of instant victory. They'll, that's going to be their advice. What was, the, what was the lesson number four? Don't let the advice of others override his nature. But there's always going to be somebody who will advise, advise you into his life because it gives glory to God by uh, offering up Christ to the Father. That's good advice. And that's good advice for kids or teenagers or adults or anybody that they begin to see the difference in these things instead of just wanting to get back at your enemies. Lesson number five is live by a new covenant heart. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately. And it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said to the unto his men, the Lord forbid that I should do this thing. Okay, so what smote, what was it that smote his heart, smote him over doing this thing? Was it God? No. Was it Saul? See, we're all waiting for God to correct us. Well, I'll do this and God will correct me. We want God. So we sit there and we wait and we're going, well, I know God's going to talk to me about this. I know. But God didn't. David's heart smote him. That's what it says. We have to come to a place where we don't, and we've got his heart in us. We've got a new covenant heart. I will give you a new heart. My spirit I will put in you. So, um, uh, well, let's just move on because I think we're getting late. I don't know how much time we got. Um, I wrote down, David looked at what he had done. He saw it as something that God would forbid. He is in the process of becoming royal. What would God forbid? It wasn't some rank sin. It was taking vengeance on somebody who deserved it. That's what he forbids. He wants the lamb. What he, what he allows is his son being coming out of us. And he allows for that. And I wrote, a tender heart and sensitivity to the Lord is better than insensitivity to others just because they did you wrong. People's, people are going to do us wrong all the time. We cannot let their wrongs rob us of sensitivity to the Lord. And then finally, the last one is, uh, remember this is called Les Lessons uh, from the Cave, okay? And that is, um, until others are royal, keep them from their beastly ways. All right, so verse, verse 4 through 6, Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privately, and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid 
that I should do this thing. The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. And then verse 7 says this. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. And again, this lesson is lesson number six. Until others are royal, which his men were not royal, they were not growing in the nature of Christ, of the Lamb on the throne of their hearts. They were ready. They thought it was God to strike and to hurt and to kill and to be crucifiers. And who's going to stop them? Well, we're all waiting for God to change everybody. But David didn't. David had a heart towards God, and he knew that anything he said was going to affect his men. Any action he took was going to affect his men. And he knows that he is the anointed of God in reality, and that he's supposed to be king and will one day be king. He knows that, and he also knows that these men are going to be the, the basis of the foundation of his kingdom. And he knows he needs to teach them right. He needs to teach them the Lord. He needs to teach them the Lamb. Um, so this is, this is how David stayed the hand of violent men. See, we, 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 if someone offends us, we find someone that agrees with us and we tell them and we gather our little men and we make our little kingdom and we build people around us in the image of the flesh, wounded flesh and hurt flesh. And, and, and um, uh, we believe that that's right because somebody's wrong and we're right. But see, that's not the correct tree. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, it's funny that the tree of, if the tree of life in the garden represents the life of Christ and, and represents the tree, which is uh, the cross, um, it never got touched. It never got wanted. It never got desired. It never got, it got left out and Adam and Eve ended up out of the garden. Um, but you see the rejected one, Jesus, who died on the cross, became Lord of all, not because of his greatness, not because he used power to destroy his enemies, but he took that upon himself and he gave himself and he uh, allowed what was not his to be blamed for it. And at the same time, David's doing the same thing and he's lifting up Saul and, and saying, don't do that. Even if they're your enemies, even if they're hurting you, even if they're doing all this stuff, don't have that spirit because you are building a kingdom, but it's the wrong kingdom that you're building in you. And he said, God forbid that I should do that. He didn't say, God forbid that I should, as I said before, some rank horrible sin. He said, God forbid that I should seek to destroy him, seek to make him look bad in my own men's eyes. So the last sentence that I wrote is, he did it while seeking to be a, li he stayed their hand, he stopped violent men from attacking someone that deserved it. He did it while seeking to be a living example in word, and deed of what his coming kingdom would look like. Because he knew he'd sit on the throne. And he knew what kind of people he wanted with him. So, lessons from the cave. This is the Spirit of God. Um, and it's not just a history lesson. This is the Spirit of God who is um, dealing with all of us about going after that son, about hungering after that son. And that's the son, what's, what's described there, that's the son that we're after. That's the kingdom we're going to be a part of. Okay, well, well, someone says, well, when we get to heaven, we'll be a part of that kingdom. He's trying to build that kingdom in us now. 
And, and that's why I said for whether you're, you're a child or a teenager or whatever, does not matter. There are always injustices. There are always people that are wrong and that do us wrong. That's going to be the case. And if we believe that the, the, the fight of God is to destroy injustice against his people, we would be wrong. The, 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 the uh, efforts of the Spirit of God and of the Father are to bring us into one nature with them, one Spirit, so that we all might be one. And that's what Jesus' last prayer was. It's his last major prayer in John 17, just before they came to take him. And his prayer was, O oh, Father, that they may be one with us, even as we have been one for all eternity. So let's pray. Father, we, we don't just see David, a man of history in the Old Testament, but we see your son at work in our hearts using this picture. Lord, you know that long years ago you started dealing with me in this way and you started telling me there's no, you do not want to promote something that is going to be contrary to your spirit, that will use that privilege for self-benefit. And you, have, you are still working in me even as I speak in humility and, and need and brokenness, you are still working in me toward that end, that that may be my heart toward you, to give you your sacrificed son through this unworthy vessel. And I ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to do it in all of us, all of us as we hunger together, as we stand together, as we're not alone in this, this desire for more of an increase of this Jesus in our lives so that we may fill the earth with your spirit and nature and it rise, Father, as a sweet incense to you, a sacrifice pleasing in your sight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you guys. I really do. I love you. I love you. And I pray for you, and I thank you for all the prayers that you send out for all the people that you pray for. My heart is with you. See you later. Talk to you later. Bye.